this is the day. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That is a traditional greeting of the church. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Sometimes recently, that has been a difficult call uh, to gather together until we realize that when we have gathered, that we are a community. My name is Mark Fowler. I'm the lead pastor here at First United Methodist Church in Madison, Wisconsin. We have taken as our slogan, our mission, and our future something that expands beyond being downtown for good to delivering hope seven days a week. And with all that is going on in the world, oftentimes hope is a very rare commodity. We don't run away from the realities of the world here in our church and reaching out to you wherever you may be, but we are working hard and diligently and with faith that God will lead us on a path, a path that will lead us into a place of hope, a place of promise, and a place of peace. And we share that together. This is the inaugural sermon day for our new associate pastor, the Reverend Maribel Solis, and we welcome her to the pulpit and to the ministry of this church especially overseeing and working with our staff uh, in youth, young adults, and young families, as well as working with the team in outreach and Hope's Home ministry. I hope you will open your hearts and your embrace to Maribel as she visits uh, the pulpit for the first time today, the first time of many uh, where she will proclaim God's good news. Paul Melrose, the Reverend Dr. Paul Melrose also joins us. Paul is the assisting pastor for pastoral care. The chair of the church council, Ellen Carlson, will bring to us the scripture lesson. And we are grateful for Ross Cowing and the quadrilateral as they call us musically to rejoice. And they are the soundtrack, if you will, of our life of faith. What they play and sing together it is the melody and the harmony that leads us in this place. And always, a depth of gratitude from our entire church and all of you who join us today for Holly Johnson, who has created this new house of worship, of praise, of education, of faith, and of hope. Our videographer, our audiographer, and one who encourages us along. Let us join together, praise God together, worship God together, and receive a word of hope and encouragement along the path of life.
In these times, I have heard prayer referred to as groaning. The book of Romans reminds us that the whole creation is groaning. We ourselves groan, not only inwardly, but outwardly. And yet it is the spirit that intercedes for us, often through wordless groans. And so in whatever form they come to us now, we now bring our prayers to God. And as we prepare to enter into a time of prayer, I share these particular prayer concerns with you. Prayers are asked for Roy Prestige, Rod Curtis, Shirley Blank, Sally Hughes, Reverend Robert Fowler, Reverend Tina Lang, Dan Wolpert, the Zirkel family, Jim Reynolds, Gary Jordan, and Laura Nagel and her family on the death of her father. So we pray. From the moment we open our eyes each morning until we close them at night, in times when we are surrounded with struggles in all the surprising places we find hope, when we feel orphaned by the world and yet are welcomed into faith's family, you are there, holy God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. You we praise for your presence that never abandons us, but it is at our side in all of life. There is no cobwebbed corner that is not claimed by your grace. You we praise, teller of parables. Your words challenge us in moments of doubt, as well as in our times of great faith. When we run around in circles, chasing our worries and fears like a dog after its tail, you whisper hope to us. You we praise, spirit who calls to our hearts. Your voice is that gentle whisper in a world filled with angry shouts. Your joy is that refreshing shower when despair parches our souls. Your wonder opens our eyes and ears to the gifts which surround our lives. When we fail to live as your people, we are like flowers which give way to weeds. But you, O oh God, seek us out, not to condemn us, but to comfort, to forgive, and to bring us home. You challenge us and grace us to stop playing hide and seek with you as we lift up our sins, our shortcomings, our failures. And so when we turn to you insolently, O oh God of truth, when we follow those desires that control us, when we live for ourselves, shutting off the gifts of those around us, when we think we do not need to share love, hope, and peace with others, we show how we have joined that league of hooligans who ignore your way of life. Yet you, O oh God, have chosen to adopt us even then as your children. You stand with us, you forgive us, you make us inheritors with Christ of your grace and joy. So lead us now by the Spirit that we might follow Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, into creation, which groans for love and healing. When in sorrow so deep we cannot find our way out, you cradle us in comfort. In moments so shadowed we trip over our fears, you light the way for us. In joy which cascades into our souls, you fill us with healing. Even when we cannot see your hope, O oh God, it is all around us, surrounding us with peace and healing. We give thanks to you for we are forgiven and as forgiven and reconciled people, we now pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Surely, surely, surely.
This week is from the book of Genesis, chapter 28, verses 10 through 19a. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. 
So Jacob rose early in the morning and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel. Good morning, everyone. My name is Pastor Maribel Salise, Associate Pastor at First United Methodist Church in Madison, Wisconsin. I want to begin by saying it is an honor to be here and to deliver today's message. But I will, I will be honest to say, I can't help to feel that I have some big shoes to fill this morning. Overall, I feel blessed. I pray and hope that soon we can meet face to face. In the lectionary reading for today, we encountered Jacob who cheated the birthright and blessing out of his brother Esau. He is running away to save his life from, from his brother's anger. Jacob is all alone, vulnerable, with an uncertain future. And by the advice of his parents, Rebe Rebecca and Isaac, he goes to the land of Haran. He was advised not to just go find a wife, but to run for protection. His parents were afraid that their other son, Esau, was indeed going to kill him. So Jacob flees, not knowing what to expect down the road. Being on the run several days, he stopped at a certain place for the night. There is no shelter for him. There are no hotels where he could check in and rest for the night. So he decides to set up camp. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and laid down in that place. And all, all of a sudden, he has a dream. He encounters the God of Abraham and Isaac, his father, God promised him that he is going to bless him. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. Then he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. But before I continue, I am going to ask a question. Who likes to go camping? I love going camping. With, even with all the packing and unpacking, it relaxes me. I enjoy the outdoors, doing something out of the routine. I know people who do not like to go camp, and one of those is my daughter who says, why? Why do you have to go through all that, or do you want to go through all that? There's dirt, cooking outside, bugs, and sometimes you can't even find a toilet. I don't get it. My guess is that discomfort is not having a nice soft bed, nice pillow, or a blanket. That is if you are camping on a tent. If you have a camper, now that's another story. Now, years ago, when I was younger, I used to say that true camping was sleeping in a tent with sleeping bags. And as I got older, I moved to air mattress. Then I moved to a pop-up camper. And so far, I still have my pop-up camper, and I don't think I am going to go back to a tent and air mattress. We all like the comfort. So my point is, we don't like discomfort. We like to have all the accommodations. And if you don't have something that makes us comfortable, then we look forward to find what fits our style, age, or pocket. When I think about Jacob and the situation that he was in, I find it interesting that he found a stone and use it as a pillow. Who can rest with a stone as a pillow? Maybe gathering some dry grass or taking off a garment and using it as a pillow 
or simply plain floor, but a stone for a pillow? I don't know who can rest comfortable. That is what the scripture says, that he used a stone as a pillow. Someone said, Jacob used a stone as a pillow? No wonder he was having nightmares. I wouldn't call it a nightmare. To me, it was an amazing encounter with God that I wish I would have any of, uh, any of those encounters in my camping adventures. So Jacob is on this trip for himself. He's just doing what he has to do to get away from his brother Esau. And it doesn't seem he is looking for God in all this. He just wants to be safe. Up to now, Jacob has been hearing about God all his life, from his grandfather Abraham and his father Isaac, and probably never felt that God was real, never had an encounter with God himself. In the middle of anxiety, or his anxiety, fearing for his life, and not knowing if his brother was going to catch up with him while he was resting, he meets God, a personal God. Now, Jacob is able to identify with God, not just the God of his grandfather, Abraham and Isaac, but also the God of Jacob. God comes looking for him. And the text tells us that God comes to Jacob while he was sleeping. The whole story about Jacob is a lesson to us on God's grace. Grace is never about what we've done or what we are doing or what we are about to do. It's all about showing us or showing God showing us his grace undeserved, unearned, unmerited, favor and kindness. It is all about God. And after God appears to him in this dream, Jacob wakes up and responds by worshiping. He builds an altar and worships the Lord. And he calls that place Bethel, which literally means the house of God. And so the scripture, uh, in this scripture, of Jacob reflects that the life situation for some of us, it reflects what we go through, perhaps being tired, scared of what is happening in our world, wondering why we are going through this whole pandemic situation. Things aren't the same, and it doesn't look as getting any better. It is uncomfortable to be in this situation. There is fear, anxiety, and at times uncertain what the future holds. Our story for this morning shows us that in the midst of uncomfortable situation, again, anxiety, fear, difficulties of life, God is still with us no matter what happens. God is still interacting with us. So when we wake up from this discomfort situation, we can say like Jacob, surely the Lord is in this place. God chooses to meet with Jacob and brings healing to him and encourages him into a life of faith. God says to Jacob, I will be with you. God promised protection. I will protect you wherever you go. And the promise of blessing. Through you, I will bless all nations. The word of, of God to Jacob and the word of God to each one of us today is the same. God promises to be present with us through our trials in life, God promises to protect us in our most vulnerable times. God promises to pour our abundant blessings in, in our lives. And for there is nothing in this world that can separate us from God. 
no persecution, no virus, no pandemic. Healing begins when we receive this word from God, when we encounter God's presence, protection, and blessing. Jacob meets God and understands that the place where he was staying was holy ground, where people find God because of, holy, of a holy place, a place where God is worshipped rather than just being a place to hang out. It becomes holy ground. So during these difficult times, many are barely finding out that surely the Lord is in this place and did not know it. They are finding out that church buildings are not just church buildings. They are holy ground. The church can be for us a place of transformation, a place of healing, a place of encounter between us and the living God. Now, for a period of time, this pandemic has taken us away from this holy building. But that is not to say that you can't also raise an altar where you are, in your living room, in your vehicle, in your backyard, or at a campsite. Any place where, where you are, you can encounter God. It becomes a holy ground. Where is that place where God has encountered you today? Like Jacob, when we find ourselves at this certain place of discomfort, there is good news. God promises to pour out abundant blessings on our lives. Healing begins when we receive these, or the word of God. When we encounter God's presence, protection, and blessing. As we can say, uh, when we encounter this blessing, we can also say like Jacob, surely the Lord is in this place. Let us pray. Ever-present and ever-grace-filled Lord and God, let us sense and know your presence with us as you were with Jacob. Let us know your nearness and love despite our failure to live according to your will. Give us the courage and the tenacity to live by your way of love, even in the midst of a world that seems to trust power, wealth, and status instead of trusting in your presence. We ask this in the name of the word made flesh, Christ Jesus. Amen. But just one last thing. Next time you go out camping, try to use a stone as a pillow and see what happens. Blessings. I've been encouraged this week by several people uh, that I have been in Zoom meetings with and on the telephone who have talked about the importance of the church in this time of our lives together. That it is the rock or the touchstone or a path, the encouragement in a world that seems in chaos over and over again, that hope that we would be over the pandemic fairly soon, those hopes are dashed to the ground and we repair to the community of faith, remembering that God is a God of pilgrimage and accompanies us through. Many of you have been abundantly generous in your support of the ministry and the mission of this church. Just this week, there have been several major gifts that support the ministry of the church, and many of them go to Hope's Home Mission so that we can continue our outreach to feed those who are in need, especially families with the COVID virus, and now those who are homeless, who are in the encampments that are growing in the parks around Madison. 
But recently, and I think it may be a support of this new direction that we are going and, and looking at Maribel Solis leading us as our associate pastor in building program and ministry with youth and young adults and young families. There has been an amazing endowment that has been built for youth. And now there are several who have given major gifts in order to support our work with children, young families, and the whole ministry of the church to keep us moving ahead. We move ahead in this difficult time with confidence, boldness, and courage. And as you have joined us today, I would invite you to find joy in the gift of giving. Giving to a ministry that is dedicated to hope, hope, hope.
let us receive today's benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who came to make God real for us, and the unchanging love of God, who finds us in time of our deepest needs, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with you in your continued journey. Have a blessed week. Amen.